Hello, football fans. Welcome to SEC Kickoff. I'm Vince Dooley, and today we're getting ready for Week 12. The SEC's Western Division has begun to resemble the Wild West. The Texas A&M Aggies shocked the college football world and let the rest of the SEC know they would be a force to be reckoned with by upsetting number one Alabama. Let's take a quick look back at the big upset in Tuscaloosa. Texas A&M and Alabama. Former number one Alabama found out what everybody else in the SEC has found out. It is highly improbable to go undefeated playing such a demanding schedule that the league plays. Alabama coming off an emotional win the previous week over LSU was shocked early by quarterback sensation Johnny Manziel, who had the Aggies up 20 to nothing. In the second half, the tide was beginning to corral this amazing dual threat mighty might and close the gap to 20 to 17. But this frosh phenom promptly threw two perfect passes, and I do mean perfect. The first for 42 yards, and the second one for 24 yards and a touchdown to put the Aggies up 29 to 17 midway in the fourth quarter. Alabama responded like a champion with A.J. McCarron throwing a 54-yard touchdown pass to freshman receiver sensation Amari Cooper to close the gap to 29 to 24. After stopping the Aggies, McCarron hooked up with Kenny Bell for a 54-yard pass to the six. A&M's defense rose to the occasion, and McCarron's rollout pass was intercepted by A&M's cornerback Everett, who made the play of the day to preserve the upset victory. A&M won by their defense, creating three uncharacteristic Alabama turnovers, and by Mighty Manziel's two touchdown passes and 354 yards of offense that included almost a 100-yard rushing. Despite the loss, Alabama can still win the West by beating Auburn and earning the right to play for the SEC championship against Georgia. Well, the Aggies clearly earned the SEC stripes in the win over Bama. A big reason why was the play of quarterback Johnny Manziel. In this week's Football 101 segment, I'll show you why Johnny Football was named SEC Offensive Player of the Week, playing against the top-ranked team in a hostile environment. The redshirt freshman showed great composure. Let's look at a couple of examples. In the past, Manziel traditionally drives teams crazy in the first half, but good defensive teams usually catch up with him. In this case, Alabama was corralling Manziel, but he comes back with two perfect pass plays, and I mean perfect. After Alabama fumbled, and this is the first one, they line up and he's in the T formation. They do a fake and he rolls out, and the slot back comes here, they're playing man, and he comes in here, Alabama's defensive back rides him good all the way down, but there's one sweet spot between the safety man and the cornerback, and it has to be a perfect pass, and it was, and he hit him right there for about a 48-yard gain. Then he comes back on the very next play in the widespread formation. Again, Alabama lines up in man under, and the double slot back comes out, the safety man was on him good. He couldn't have covered him any better, so it took a perfect pass. And once again, Manziel hit the second perfect pass that really made the difference and put A&M up where Alabama was not able to overcome that last touchdown in the fourth quarter. Well, this weekend's SEC schedule is relatively light as most teams play non-conference opponents. However, there are a couple of traditional rivalry games this Saturday. The Ole Miss Rebels visit Baton Rouge for their annual battle with the LSU Tigers. In this week's SEC flashback, we look back at the most famous play in the LSU-Ole Miss rivalry on October the 31st, 1959, Halloween night. Number one LSU hosted number three Ole Miss in Tiger Stadium. With the Tigers down three to nothing early in the fourth quarter, LSU star Billy Cannon returned to punt 89 yards 
to propel the Tigers to victory. Cannon dodged and ran over numerous rebel defenders as he ran his way into the SEC history book. Gets another nice kick away going way downfield. Billy Cannon watches it bounce. He takes it on his own 11. He comes back up field to the 15. Stumbles momentarily. He's at the 20. Running hard at the 25. Gets away from the man the 30. Still runs the 25. Billy Cannon's famous punt return on Halloween night will always be one of the legendary plays that defines the Southeastern Conference. I was personally involved, involved in one on the sidelines against Florida when it looked like that uh, it was all over for Georgia in 1980 and the famous play Buck Ballou to Lindsey Scott, a 97-yard touchdown pass, enabled Georgia not only to win that game but to go on and win the national championship that year. As for Saturday's game in Baton Rouge, CBS will have the coverage from Tiger Stadium. The game kicks off at 3.30 Eastern Time. Ole Miss at LSU. Ole Miss lost a heartbreaker to Vanderbilt in the last minute, 27 to 26, after leading the whole game. Now they have to travel to hostile Baton Rouge to play the Tigers, who are on a roll with quarterback Zach Mettenberger, reaching his passing potential for the second straight week throwing for 273 yards and two touchdowns against Mississippi State. Mettenberger fires, caught, Landry, touchdown. With LSU's offense now on a roll, and a defense that has been on a roll throughout the season, it does not look promising for a game Ole Miss team that can move the ball and score, but has given up big plays, too many big plays in the secondary. Another rivalry game will take place this Saturday when the Tennessee Vols take on the Vanderbilt Commodores. For this week's head coach one-on-one, -on -one, we sit down with Vandy head coach James Franklin, who has his team in position to play in a bowl game for the second straight year. You know, the buzz is, is not necessarily what I've seen, it's what people have told me. People that have followed the SEC for years, people that have followed Vanderbilt football specifically for years, that's, that's where I'm getting that from. Uh, you know, the fact that we were able to go a bowl game in our first year, the fact that we've been able to recruit at a very, very high level. You know, think about it, in, in 18 months, top 25 recruiting class, bowl game, uh, brand new uh, jumbotron, brand new field turf, brand new lights, $31 million indoor. Um, you know, so there's just an excitement right now. Season tickets are, are, are on a record pace. So there's a lot of positive things going. And I think what we did is we embraced the fact that it was going to be so much more than just the X's and the O's. It was going to be marketing the program. It was getting out in the community and, 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 and interacting with people. And so far, so good. And we just got to keep building on this momentum. Now that we've heard from Coach Franklin, let me give you my thoughts. Tennessee at Vanderbilt. Both teams enter this rivalry game losing and winning close contests this past Saturday right at the end of the game. Bandy scored on a 24-yard touchdown pass in the last minute to beat Ole Miss while Tennessee lost to Missouri in the fourth overtime. Bandy, who is bowl eligible for the second straight year, the first time in school history, is favored to beat their rival Tennessee, whose defense is in the last place in the Southeastern Conference. At the same time, the Vols' offense is number two in the conference on the passing strength of quarterback Tyler Bray and some talented receivers. Vandy has the edge because they are at home and their team is better balanced. They are not particularly great in any phase, but good in all. Their running back, Zach Stacy and their passer, Jordan Rogers, are both solid and their defense is fifth in the league behind the Big Four. 
Alabama, LSU, Florida, and South Carolina. As in most rival games, this one could be tight to the end with defense being the deciding factor. For those of you who will be watching games on TV Saturday, here's the full SEC broadcast lineup. Well, fans, another episode of SEC Kickoff is in the books. The holidays are right around the corner, and a lot is still to be decided in the SEC. Please join me next week for a special Thanksgiving edition of SEC Kickoff as we preview a big rivalry weekend. I'm Vince Dooley, and I hope you enjoy your college football Saturday.